All right, we're gonna uh, kill a kill soundtrack for the Fio FT3. Um, Fio's made a headphone before. It was a Bluetooth headphone, and I'm gonna describe it as kindly as I can. It sucked balls. It was not good. You could tell it was like a company that makes amplifiers making a headphone. Now they make IEMs. Fio has faltered, but they've made great IEMs, but they just fucked up the uh, the headphone thing. Um, and I, I don't blame them for trying to go like self-powered first because you have so much more control. You have the DSP, you use a cheaper driver, you could usually finish it, but it was all bad and I didn't like it. Fast forward two years, it's been a while, the FT3 comes out. Okay, Fio, what other uh, boring standard things are you doing? A 60 millimeter driver, 350 ohm dynamic. What? All right, if you don't know, most headphones are 50 millimeter drivers. That is a 60 millimeter. Sony actually had 70 millimeter dynamics that's just Sony is fucking Sony. Um, even these Neumanns, which I brought out to compare pad sizes, because there's going to be an issue we have to discuss. These are only a 40 millimeter driver, which is kind of like, you got to be German to pull off the 40 millimeter driver. 50 is the standard, like across the board, every cheap Chinese headphone and good, it's 50. So Fio is like, no, 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 we'll do 60. Okay, what else? So let me, let me get to the actual words, because APO sent this out. It uses a beryllium plated gasket and diamond like carbon diaphragm. Okie dokie. By the way, these are three hundred dollars. I want to get you in the in the mindset of three hundred dollars first. So, because a hundred dollar headphone, a brand new company trying to make a headphone is like, all right, you're a little bit limited on what you could do. Six hundred dollar headphone is too fucking expensive. No one's gonna touch your headphone. It's new. Three hundred is a perfect price because you have to prove yourself, and this is a great way to do it. Um, so there is your insanely large 60 millimeter driver and problem number one, which it isn't so much a comfort thing anymore. I've been using them. I initially complained that this is, this is a barely loose two knuckle in case you haven't seen that. It's certainly not a three knuckle. And I even brought out some, uh, Dakoni gel bare dynamics, which are a, a very, uh, like a tight three knuckle to try to put on there. But they use this system, which is a... Completely gasketed, by the way. All of this is foam gasket and then five clip system. And it comes with two sets of pads by default. It comes with these uh, velour or felt open ones. And then it comes with a center suede lined, or these are suede, then a center suede lined solid protein leather, perforated protein leather, other pair of pads. And there is a very good difference between the two, which is nice. A lot of times they'll give you a pad and like one is just shit and you don't want to use it and one is the correct pad. This actually, you're going to have a hard time because I'm having a hard time deciding which one I like to use more. Um, let's put this one back on. There are two pins at the bottom, which line up with the two holes at the bottom. So even though it's all five of them could rotate, there's just extra pins. So just don't fuck it up. Where's my hole? Uh, you basically... Listen, very solid attachment. Like I, I do approve of how well it goes together. The looks are, you're either gonna love this or you're gonna hate this. You're either gonna be like, that looks like a rim on a 1990s European import car they put in Need for Speed Underground, which I played that game. Need for, Need for Speed Underground 2 was a great game. And yes, it does kind of resemble that, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't. And it looks interesting. We've got the mesh behind it. We've got a suspension strap system, which I'm either hit or miss on these. A lot of my favorite headphones, like the like the Venus have it, where it's just a, a these are a solid plastic and that slides up and down and there's elastic on the inside. Very soft top here. Like Fio at least got comfort for 90% of this down pat, 90%. The other 10 I'll talk about and bitch, like a bitch. Um, soft suede up here, velour. The top is a hardened, a hardened fake leather. Like it's just plasticky. This is all plastic leather. It's fine. It's just there to protect the metal, which is the spring steel that holds the clamp. The clamp, look at that, nice and linear. Other issue with um, comfort. It does pivot a little bit front and back, which is nice. And it does pivot like this. However, look, spring loaded again. I have an issue with spring loaded 
because if it's too spring-loaded, then it pushes the bottom of the pad against your ear, and depending on the size of your head and how far it's going, that spring-loaded might bother you. It's gotten better with me. Um, initially, I was also upset about the size of the hole. Giggity. And um, after wearing them for a couple hours, they've sort of like broken in a little bit. Because yes, breaking is a thing, especially on physical things that you're wearing like jeans and pants and shoes. And uh, I don't find them uncomfortable at all anymore. However, like I said, I did just sort of like place these in there and we've got both a comfort and slight sound improvement. So if you're looking to buy the FIO FT3, uh, I'm gonna push real hard to get the Deconi boys over there to uh, make some pads because you're gonna need to have this silly system. I would rather of most headphones were just like mounting, just stretch it around the thing like every other headphone. Unfortunately, Fio's like, nah, we're doing this our way. So I'm okay with everything headband. It's, it's certainly better than everything Hi-Fi Min has ever made. That's like the, 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 the line, that's the line in the sand. By the way, you get this mouse pad in the description, but it's adorable. Um. It's very plain, Jay. Like, it says the Fio logo. The Fio logo, by the way, has changed, and it's trying to be, like, more futuristic. But it's all, like, this, like, it's blue. There's blue and gray in here, and it's just like, all right, I get it. The wire. So we talked about the pads. We talked about the build. talked about the comfort. Let's talk about the wire for a second. Luckily for us, standard 3.5 millimeter. However, these are odd connectors because it looks like it has a notch way here for like popping into something like the old uh, Brainwaves HM5s used to actually go inside the unit and you'd feel like a poop. And these are flush mount right here. There is an R there, by the way, and then an R on the inside. So you have two spots you can actually see where it is. They're a little hard to... Don't scratch up my basement. Cats are using the entire wood thing here as a scratching post. So eventually my stairs will just collapse. But let's talk more about the wire. I'm super thankful there's 3.5 millimeter on here. And normally when I have a headphone with 3.5 millimeter wire, what I'll do is I'll go get out a heart audio cable or a periapt cable. Periapt makes these really nice, thick, singular units. They're like real smooth and nice. This is actually the Z Reviews commemorative one. And heart audio makes the ones that have interchangeable ends like this or solid ones if you want. And they're usually much more varied in color and length and you can really customize what you want and get all different heads for the ends. So you don't have to buy more than one. However, Fio decided it's going to make a decent cable but it's gonna be nine feet long or three meters long. So we've got our two 3.5s. This really fucking, it's thick, but it's smooth and nice fabric leading to metal here, Fio. And then what can only be described as another additional eight feet of Sennheiser HD 280 cable or Sennheiser, no, no, I'm sorry, correct me. Sennheiser HD 800 cable. You know that shit cable that I fucking hate? That's this, but this is better than that because look, it's still flexible, it's still fabric, you can still see the twist as it goes down. So it's got this sort of like feel to it. It's nine feet long, which it's the only headphone cable that comes with it. So if you want something short, if you want to take these on the go, which by the way, they're 350 ohms, so you're probably not gonna be taking them on the go. Um, but if you want something at your desk that isn't this, um, again, I will link to Periapt and Hard Audio in the description. However, again, Fio didn't fuck this up. Fio has given you an actually nice cable made out of, wait, Furukawa monocrystalline copper wire. I don't know who that is, but apparently they got it. And then Fio makes IMs. Fio makes IMs with interchangeable heads. We have interchangeable heads. You can switch to, and where's my notch? Hold on, I gotta find my notch. You can switch to the quarter inch adapted 3.5 millimeter, or you can unscrew this again. By the way, this is like the first headphone I think that does this. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong. Or you can put the 4.4 balanced on, and then, just to fuck with the status quo, 4.4 to four pin XLR adapter. I have one of these. It's here. 
It was sent to me by Double Helix. It's like $160 for this for a, a, a full self-enclosed 4.4 to 4 pin. Usually they're the ones with the little... There. This is the ones you can find on Amazon. I'll link to this one too. There's a 4.4 and there's a 4 pin. And there's a little wire to connect it to. It's all great. It's like $26. That's a hundred and something dollars, and Fio fucking gives you one. So thank you, Fio. You just thank you. That's that's all you get is a thank you. Let's put that down right there. So the wire is not bad. It's smooth. It's heavy yet light. It's got that. It's got that right amount of like audiophilia going for it. Like it feels good. It feels good. It's well indicated with the with the the Batman font. It looks like a font from a Batman movie. My only problem is when I pick it up to plug it in, I look here and there's no indicator here. So I gotta sort of peek over there and say, okay, that's L. So this is R. Unless you can see the bottom ones in the dark. So we're gonna continue to use the stock cable on this. We have the standard unbalanced cable there. And we're gonna plug this in. Where are we going? Where are we going? Because if you didn't notice. I pulled out a special guest, or actually I turned on a special guest. Because since this is a 60 millimeter dynamic, big dynamic, and 350 ohms, big impedance, I knew that tubes were gonna be a thing we're gonna have to conquer. So if I use this DD Hi-Fi adapter, I could swap the thing again, but this is just easier. If I plug this in here, we're in the now the TA26. And I just came. Okay, so I haven't spent, I didn't spend much time with these before I was like, all right, test them out. I did the sound demo for them already. If you don't know, the sound demos are now private. You can link, there's a link in the description to take you to Patreon or Subscribestar. Once you're there, you can get to the Oasis where all the sound demos, including ones that have disappeared off YouTube, at least the audio from those is available. And any new sound demos, I just push there privately and 150 to 300 people will watch them and listen to them and get to listen to whatever I play. And I did that sound demo, having just finished burning these in and I didn't actually spend a ton of time with them because it's just a sound demo, put it in. And if I was going to redo that sound demo, it would be on tubes. Because I've got this Violetric, uh, I will link to where these came from. Uh, these came from a uh, digital DJ gear, I believe, or Dakoni or directly is selling them. One of those two sites. So we've got the HPA V340 and the HPA V222, which are very expensive. I came again. Um, German made uh, amplifiers. I've got my topping LA90 going off here. Got the Arkel 3 Pro from Gishelli Labs. I got the gamut. And then I plugged it, not into that, not into this. I plugged it into this. For those of you who haven't paid attention for the last like four years, this is a Tor Audio balanced amplifier. And it's a tube amp. And it's got just XLRs on top and just an XLR out in the back behind the tube, of course. There's your volume knob, there's your power, and there's the wood that's like falling off because it's made in Ukraine. And it has four toroidal transformers around the outs the inside of it. And I haven't used it in like a year because well, I tried to use it when the whole Ukraine thing happened and try to support, but I don't even I'll link to it. Hopefully it's there, keep them in business. But I haven't used it because it just sort of sits there and usually there's plugs here and behind it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just did the Dakoni um, Cobalt, which was a, a dynamic, super low impedance, 12 ohms. And I basically said, this is a great headphone four or five hundred dollars four hundred dollars usually and then you put it on a tube and you get all the tube which is weird for a low impedance but it didn't work on the ta26 this works on the ta26 because it's high impedance these are brothers in arms because this is an open back and that's a closed back and the difference that it makes like if you need it's weird that all these headphones now like two in a row have come out that have just massive change on a tube. Because a lot of times I'll plug a headphone in like the Neumanns here, which are very German and very dynamic, but you know, these are originally designed to be studio monitors. And you plug them in and you plug them into a tube and you plug them into your standard amp and it's just like, 
all right, there's something different, but it's not worth it. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to consider a tube amp with this particular headphone? With that one, no. With the 20s, yes. And with the very cheap uh, Sennheiser HD280 Pros, absolutely. HD600s, which are 300 ohm. You know what the HD600s, right? right? You do know those? Those are like perfect example of a very good headphone, very clean, very neutral. Then you give it to a tube and it's like, it's alive. It becomes alive. And the thing about this headphone is, is I liked it before I tubed it. I liked it on both sets of pads. You're not the pads. You go here. By the way, I added this Giselle Labs DAC because it needs some color amongst the black dark, like the fucking Vader's audiophile system. Here we got Q Kitty Cats, got Red Waifus, and we got the Giselle Labs uh, J2. Um, I like this pair of headphones before tubing them. And now that I've tubed them, I fucking love them. Love, 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 love. Because you can just tell there's an extra 10 millimeters of driver diameter. Just circumference, diameter, radius, diameter. Yes, five millimeters of radius. Um, it just, I just, I'm going to just change tracks and raise volumes. Here, I'll unplug. All right, I'm un unplugging. I'm plugging. I'm plugging into here. Watch. It's super clean, super straight, super neutral. Good bass, great sound stage. It's energetic. It's it's a it's a fun headphone. This is a fun headphone. I'm so glad Fio didn't make a boring. They need to take this and make their all their IMs based on this. However, so good. So good. So good. 20% better. More separation of instruments. More more width. More air. More just bigger. It's just it's everything becomes tube. And then if even if I bounce it up to the relatively affordable TA26 here and do the same thing. I can actually tell the treble isn't as good on the TA26 as it is in the tour. I can just tell. It's treble's a little bit more harsh. It's just a little harsh. I was even considering busting out the fucking... Not busting out the fucking, but, but getting the goddamn dark voice out. You see it over there? There's my OG dark voice. I even uncovered it. I was like, am I going to get that out? And I went, wait. Before I take out a non-balanced tube amp, let's try this one. And then the world ended. So, Fio has universally not fucked these up. In fact, they've even stolen some stuff that's really nice. Anybody recognize this bag? Which they say is leather, by the way. Anybody recognize a bag with, like, a strap that goes diagonally across the top, and then you have, like, the Fio logo, and then you have, like, these beautiful big zippers that go around? And you open it up, and then it looks like that on the inside. Also, you got a velour bag. Like, this is this is one of those nice bags. Like, if you had a sleeping gerbil, you would just, like, make him a little bed in it. And you could just be so cute and happy and comfortable. And, you know, oh, this is why AI won't replace me, motherfucker. You can't make AI just randomly talk about gerbils. And when you do, then I'm, then I'm fucked. But this bag is just, like, first of all, massive. Huge bag. And then this massive, huge case, which if you haven't figured it out, uh, Focal headphones usually come in a bag that looks remarkably similar to this. And I believe that Focal doesn't make them in France and whatever factory Focal is buying them from, Focal might want to send them a letter or two and be like, hey, did you just, you know, color it peanut butter and then give it to Fio? So it's a nice fucking bag. So you're getting a bag that usually comes with like seven, eight hundred dollar French headphones. You're getting headphones that they're not too. They're, they're, they got some weight to them. Like they got some. Like you could just hear. This is the the good bounce test. It's like you could see there's weight to the driver to the to the structure, even if it's aluminum. But it it just fits perfectly. And then this this spring loading thing, it'll probably loosen up a wear in. And the fact that my ear is hitting the bottom of this. It just started going away. Just after an hour of wearing them for the very first time, just like, you know what? 
these aren't that uncomfortable. So, Theo fucking up the game. The, I'm just like, Theo, you, you didn't fuck up anything. I don't, I don't hate the way they feel. I don't, wait, I don't hate the way they look. I'm not in love with this design. It looks a little bit too, like, again, 90s. You know what this would be? Oh, oh, Tony Hawk's pro skater. Like, if you rendered Tony Hawk skateboarding with, like, DJ headphones, this is exactly what they would look like if you drew it in the 90s to be cool. So give them that. We'll just give them that. It'd also be bright green or yellow, which, uh, you know what? I would... I would be tempted to take this apart and paint this and put it back on like Evangelion colors, like bright purple and greens. Um, don't hate the, don't hate the build. The build is solid. There is a scratch on mine. I don't know if I gave it to it, if it came out of the factory like that. I just want to point that out here also. It's just like a da -da -da -da. So it might've just been me roughhousing with it. You know, I like to wrestle alligators wearing headphones I haven't tested yet. I would... I, I don't mind the wire being at the bottom. That's usually another thing I point out as a wire. I prefer it back here, like on an angle, like get it away. But these are such short connectors. It doesn't really bother me. Like I don't, I don't feel even remotely like it's going to hit my collarbone like I did on the Venus. Um, the accessories. I mean, fuck you, man. The goddamn this, this alone should be $50. So these aren't $300 headphones. These are $250 headphones with a $50 free adapter. And then the wire comes out and the wire is spectacular and has interchangeable ends and doesn't feel shitty or bad. And then it sounds, and I guess I should probably concentrate more on how it sounds, Zeos. How does it sound, Zeos? Well, let's let's take it off the cheat mode, which is the tube. Un Uncheat that. Let's swap it out. We'll give it, we'll give it to a... Well, actually, that's a $700 amp or $600 amp, so it's not really like an affordable amp either. But we're going to give it to the Gishelli Labs, Arkel. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not going to swap back to these. I should probably talk about the pads. That's another thing because, like I said, the pads... I don't believe that. The pads make a difference. On the Velour pads, these nice, soft sons of bitches, which are they made of the same material as this? Did they just take... No. Pads are nice in the back. By the way, 350 ohms on this needs high gain and well past noon. It's, it's, they claim it's a balanced sound with these pads. And they claim that this actually adds soundstage. And they're not wrong. This definitely ups the detail because you're trapping more of the sound inside of it. And this ups the sound stage. I feel like this traps more detail, but doesn't add to the sound stage. This is a little bit more, more relaxed. And the thing about the bass is I can't tell which one has better bass because this has slightly more impactful bass, but this is a better presentation of it as far as I'm concerned. It's, I've, I've reviewed too many headphones and now my brain is broken. Saying the words that make the... It's like immediately in the middle of your head. It's like you get the imaging. Hold on, I want to hear. I want to hear this thing go. Ching. You know, these are a fun, clear, energetic. I guess fun and energetic are the same thing. I'm. I. Oh, I'm maxing out. A Article Three is not recommended. That was so loud. Corn is playing. They do a marvelous job of presenting sound in a space. Like I got this from the Devilman Cryberry. De Cryberry. <laughs> Devilman Cryberry. It's a new type of berry drink. Devilman Crybaby Enigma. And that just ding. Like you could tell they're just hitting a fucking xylophone in an untreated room and recording it. And I could hear the whole room around that fucking xylophone. Actually, hold on. I'm taking this song, for those of you who want sound demo stuff, that is going into the new test folder so it could end up in a sound demo at some point. Because that's I'm like a fucking toy. Oh, epic score grievance. 
It's just this big whoa, it sounds like Dune. And it's just proliferating my whole body. Like I could feel the, it claims seven hertz response. And I tend to believe it. I don't think it's gonna go flat to seven hertz, but it's it's got the ability to do low end. That 60 millimeter driver, that's another thing about getting a bigger driver. That usually means slower response time. Because obviously you play a 12 inch woofer and it's like, make vocals come out. And it's gonna be like, no. So you gotta make it smaller and smaller and smaller until it can do vocals, which is like the two, 3000 hertz range. And then you want like piezo tweeters and little bells. You can't make that out of a 12. So you gotta get smaller and smaller and smaller. And smaller. So you got like a three quarter inch tweeter and then you can get bells. So this, so making a headphone driver slightly bigger, I don't even know what the percentage is from 50 to 60 millimeters. I'm sure someone will do it in the comments and post it. I'll be like, I upload. Um, means you're probably going to be slowing the driver down so it can't respond to the highs as quickly. But diamond like car but diamond like carbon and beryllium, sorry, the battery died, means speed is the weight is down so they're trying to get the speed up to keep it in the right zone. If they would have just made this out of an old school plastic fucking driver, it probably would sound muddy and it doesn't sound muddy. It's way too clean of a, of a presentation of the highs to, to be. Oh, God, Freebird's coming on. Oh, should I just sit here for nine minutes and 13 seconds and describe how Freebird's coming through? No, I think we've got enough. All right, so they've succeeded in almost every way. Minus the looks, I'll give them like a six out of 10 on looks, but everything else about this headphone screams buy me. Buy me, buy me, buy me. I'm mostly comfortable. I will say again, I did have an interesting little time with the Dakoni pads. These are the gel filled ones for like Bear Dynamics. Just, just, just put them here. Just sort of put them here and then just like hold them and then put them on. And it's like, oh, they fit. And then like, it actually changes the tuning a little bit, and they'd have to work on that. Like, Dakoni would have to work on that, but... You're getting more air. Like, I don't even know... Is this even... I don't even think... And this is, by the way, an angle to driver, in case you didn't notice it. Um, I don't even think this hole is 60 millimeters. This, this... It might be, like, 61 millimeters or 58 millimeters, because it doesn't look big enough to have the driver come through. So they might actually be crushing the driver down, which could be part of the tuning the way they have it shooting out. But now this is a remarkable headphone on Fio's part. I'm glad they produced it. And uh, I give them full applause for it. Golf claps. Anyway, um, if you like this video, please like it. You fucks, there, you happy? I'm gonna do the YouTube thing where I tell people to like my fucking video. Like and share, and don't forget to give it to your elderly mom, because I wanna see her fucking comments when I have my colored language come out. Anyway, wallpaper available in the hoard. Links to these on APOS, thank you APOS for sending that out. Links to Giselle Labs, links to wherever the Violetrics came from. Links to all sorts of things. And uh, yeah, this, don't, don't sue them, please. I like this bag, I like it. And link to the cable manufacturers, which if I was gonna use these permanently on a desk, and I didn't want to deal with nine feet, because I legitimately was like, am I running over the cable every time I rolled back? Periapt, or heart cable. Anyway, thank you, Patreon subscribe star. See these reviews early, participate in yard sales. First to the 10th of every month. I ship to Canada and United States for free and half shipping international. Um, Sound demos, I talked about those earlier. Get those only now in the Sound Demo Oasis to my patrons and supporters. Um, $10 a month, private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you could ask me questions directly. Like, Zeos, what's your sign? And I'll be like, no. And then uh, you get into that and you get into a lifetime swap me channel where you get to buy, sell, and trade gear. My sign is anime waifu. So wait, wait, is that the, the shocker? Is that my sign? I don't know. Anyway, I'm done, you're done, she's done, we're done. Mouse pad, see you in two days. Or in Munich, whichever one comes first.